Hello, everybody. My name is Coach Brittany. Welcome to our um, Work Deep on Ice Training first FBA at Home session. Really excited to have you guys. Um, our, our goal of these sessions is basically just to connect with you guys. We want to do some fun, interesting classes. So um, we're kicking it off today with a self-portrait class. Um, I love to draw and my favorite person to draw is myself. So <laughs> for today's class, I'm going to show you guys kind of some things that I've learned along the way. Um, if you have any questions, Coach Karen will be in the chat. Um, she's there and she's she's available. She'll ping me if it's something that if I'm moving too fast or something that you guys don't understand. Um, but definitely drop in the questions. Let us know how it's going for you. If it's turning out um, amazing or if it's not amazing, <laughs> we want to hear all of your feedback and then make sure that um, once you're done with your piece, share it with us because I'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Um, and I sure, I'm sure they're gonna be great. So I dropped in the chat or in the comments um, what you need for today, but I'll just review. We're gonna start with, make sure you have paper. Um, I have cut my pieces of paper into different sections. Um, so you want to at least have two pieces of paper and then you can always just flip and use the other side. So paper is a must. And then pencils, we're going to use the pencils for today. And then I am going to be using, um, if you want, you can use an eraser. Don't need it for today. I don't think erasers are really that necessary, um, but you want to have it. Scissors, also optional but they're gonna be fun to cut out your work afterwards. And then you're gonna want something to color with. So if you have a bunch of crayons, yay you. <laughs> um, those are gonna come in handy. Just bring the whole box, you know, put it somewhere close. If you don't have a lot of crayons, you just have one, um, just choose one color that you're gonna use today and then we'll go over how we're gonna color that. Um, so just starting off, I'd like everyone, just like every other muscle, or any other activity, there's a warm up, and the warm up really helps you um, get those muscles moving, get your creativity going. And um, we're going to do the same thing for drawing. So I'm going to go through and show some examples of some self portraits, give us some inspiration. And then um, while I'm talking, I want you guys to warm up. So you're going to use one side of your piece of paper and draw whatever you want. Um, if you can't draw, that's fine. <laughs> no one's going to see this part. So I want you guys to draw if you're drawing um, stars, hearts, um, just dots all over your paper, whatever you need to do um, to just get those muscles moving. And try to be loose. Be loose with your movements. We're not going to go super detailed. Um, we're just getting our, our hands warmed up so i am actually going to switch off my video right now okay um all right so everybody should be warming up now everybody warming up if you're warming up say warm up in the set <laughs> okay so we are going to i'm going to introduce you guys a few pieces um, this is a self-portrait by Vincent Van Gogh, um, and he was a post-impressionist painter um, whose work is known mostly for its beauty, emotion, and color. Um, his work is highly influenced by 20th century art, and he's also really known for his starry night piece. So if you kind of look at the background, the way there's the swirling action, if you look up and search starry night, you'll see that it's kind of that same type of movement going on. So um, this is Vincent Van Gogh, which I want you guys to pay attention to mostly in this one, is how we have this blue, we have these shades of blue, but we also have um, this really interesting red going on. So the colors are what I want you guys to pay attention to. Then we're moving into another one. This is, um, the, her full name is Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. <laughs> um, people mostly go by, mostly go call her by Frida. Um, and she is, um, she was a Mexican painter. She's known for her surreal and very personal work. She did a lot of self-portraits um, and she was, um, did a lot of works inspired by nature and artifacts of Mexico. Um, and her style is more surrealism than magic realism. So hers is a little bit more realistic, uh, but once again, like these colors are very vibrant and interesting. So that's, that's really neat. 
And then uh, lastly, for our example today, um, we have Faith Springgold. Um, she is an African-American artist and author who was born in the 1930s in Harlem, New York City. Um, and she is known for a large painted story quilts. As a child, she was taught to sew fabrics by her mother, who was a fashion designer. Um, and so looking at her piece, it's interesting because she does a lot of these simple shapes where we have just circles everywhere, um, things that you can identify and do yourself. But she, the way she adds in the color is really what makes it pop. So now that we've got that going, we're going to get to the drawing part. Who's ready? <laughs> So for our first exercise today, we are gonna do something called a continuous contour drawing. And I want you guys, if you can, moms, dads, if you guys are watching, parents, if you guys can um, just make a note at the bottom so you know what it is that you're drawing and you can use that for later. And then I always, I always like to date and then I just pretend like I'm famous already. So I put my signature at the bottom. So <laughs> I always put that in there. And then the date is always helpful is that you can look back that, look back on that later. Okay, so um, continuous contour drawing. Contour, a contour line is a line that defines the outline of a form without the use of shadows. So we're just getting um, how something moves, where it connects to, just using the outline. I'm actually gonna go in with marker just so that you guys can see um, what I'm doing, but you guys use pencils so that, you know, you can always erase. Okay, so when we're gonna do this exercise, you're gonna prop up your mirror. If you don't have a mirror, you can use your phone. Um, and then if you don't have a phone and you want to do maybe someone sitting across from you, maybe your brother or somebody's in the room or um, uh, a friend is, is, is staying at home with you, then you, got, you can draw them. So um, I have my mirror set up somewhere. I'm actually using my iPad. And... For this activity, you're gonna use one line. So that means at all times your pencil doesn't leave the paper. It stays on the paper the whole entire time. So it's gonna look funny. That's the, that's, that's the fun part, honestly. It gets you out of your head. A lot of times when we draw, we draw what we think we see versus what we're act what, what's actually there. So this exercise is great at just um, forcing you to draw what, what's actually there, what am I looking at? Okay. So I've got my mirror set up and I'm gonna get started. One continuous line. Um, so you can't lift it off at any times, but you can look down in your paper to see what's what's happening if you want to. So I'm gonna get started. I'm not look, I'm, I'm looking down at my paper, but I'm not gonna lift up my pencil. So you guys get started too. <laughs> Everyone gets, everyone's gonna do it together. If you're lost or you're confused, just look along what I'm doing. Um, but I want everyone to, to do this activity. So I'm here and then I'm gonna try to connect my nose, do my nostril, and try and draw big. You wanna use up the, the entire paper. Now I'm gonna try to get my eyes. My eyelashes look good today, so I wanna try to get those in. That looks crazy. Now I'm gonna go do my eyebrows. And then I'm coming back around here. I can see my earring, so I wanna kinda of get that in. And then going around, oop, forgot my lips. So I'm gonna try to connect that here. Around, how's it coming guys? Here, and then I have an earring that I love. Here, and then I'm coming back up here for my hair. So I'm gonna do something like this. Gorgeous, look, look at that self-portrait. <laughs> this is, this is, it looks beautiful. I'll bring it up close as you guys can see. <laughs> Mine looks funny. I think, I think that's the fun part of it. I love contour um, drawing, continuous contour drawing. So that's continuous contour drawing. 
parents, if you're with your child and they just want to stay there with that one, you know, do that one all day. That's good. <laughs> they can stay right there. We're going to move on now and we're going to do a blind contour drawing. This one, this one's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do. Um, a blind contour drawing is when you're going to use your contour line, except you're not going to look down at your paper. You're only going to use your mirror. You're going to look at your mirror in front of you. <laughs> hey, hi guys. Hi, Evan. Hi, Peyton. So we're going to look down. Um, we're going to look only in the mirror. We're not looking down what's happening on the piece of paper. Um, for this activity, you can lift your pencil off of the paper, but I personally don't do that, especially since I'm not looking down at what's happening. I don't know. My ear might end up near my mouth. So <laughs> I just keep my pencil down the whole time. Um, but it's totally up to you. The only requirement for this part is that you're not looking down at your paper. So we're gonna we're gonna get ready and I'm gonna go get started. So I'm going up to my eyebrow. I'm going in for my eyes. My eyelashes again. And Good. No idea how this is turning out. I hope it looks beautiful. <laughs> Here. And then I think I want to try to do my eye. And then my eyebrow. I'm actually coming back around. Hmm. I'm going to try to go back. And then come down to the mouth. And then, oh, need my ears. <laughs> ears are important. Earring. Hmm. Going up to my hair. Hair's doing some fun things. I hope this looks good. Around. How's it going, guys? I want to know. Even if you're, even our, our non KOI skaters, if you're just in here for fun because you want to draw, I want to hear from you. So drop a line, let us know that you're here. I think this is my earring. And then, boom. <laughs> oh man, she's gorgeous. Look at this masterpiece. <laughs> So I'm going to, I'm going to, so on here, I'm going to write blind contour drawing. Once again, if you find a, t if there's something in here that we do and you just want to keep doing that, feel free. Like this is supposed, this is all fun. Um, so you don't have to stop. I think it'd be really fun, especially if you're at home with a lot of people. If you want to just go home and just start drawing different people doing blind contours and do maybe like a, a whole family portrait, that would be a lot of fun. I'd love to see that. So. Once you're done with the blind contour drawing, we're gonna put that to the side for a little bit, or you can keep going while I'm talking. Um, we're gonna get into, so maybe you did that drawing and you're like, okay, Coach Brittany, I know my nose does not look like that. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in doing something a little bit more realistic. So um, we're gonna get into a little bit about face proportions. We're gonna learn about kind of how they're, they're laid out. Um, when I'm drawing or, or when you draw, but one of the techniques that I picked up and learned about is that you want to start with simpler shapes. Um, sometimes when you look at a face or you look at something, you kind of can get overwhelmed. Um, but if you break it into something like uh, a circle or a, a triangle, a rectangle, break it down like that first, then your mind can start putting together those um, details. So when we're drawing a face or when I draw a face, I can try to put it in that I'll show for you. When I'm drawing a face, I, I start with a circle. And then if you're trying to draw a circle, what I normally do is I start light. Can you guys see that? I might have to go on with a marker. But I start light. And then once I've got a shape, I go darker. A shape that I'm happy with. So you just keep going around. You also, also notice how I'm holding my pencil. Um, when I'm writing, I hold my pen pencil really close and really tight. But when I'm drawing, I try to stay loose. That gives room for more stuff. 
Okay, that's how we want to start all our faces. Then I'm just going to draw a, a light line through the middle. Down like that. Let's see, struggling with a line. Hey, Coach Tanaz, Ashley, Melissa, Nikoi, is that how you say your name? So excited. Really glad you guys are here. Okay, so I'm drawing a line down the middle. Once we got that line down the middle, then we're going to do, I like to draw one more like this, also in the middle. And then from here to here, I break it up again. But notice this time it's not going to be halfway through. It's going to be a little bit closer down here. And this line is actually where most of your eyes fall, where the midway of your eyes fall. And then this in between part is where our eyebrows are going to lie. Okay. So we have a circle, we have some lines, we have our eyes. Coach Brittany, where, where, where does my nose, my mouth, all of that good stuff. So <laughs> don't worry, I got you. Now we're gonna draw the other part. So I'm going to go in here, starting from this middle line, and I'm drawing a slanted line like this. Draw a slanted line down. Now you wanna kind of look at your face shape. Some people's faces are more boxier than others. Um, some people's are more pointy. My face in particular, uh, supposedly I have a PJ head. So <laughs> I'm not gonna make it too big, but I'm gonna bring this line down. And then once I get to like halfway here, this point right here, I'm gonna start curving it. Let us know if we're going too fast. If you guys have any questions, it can be questions about Fort DuPont. It can be questions about me. Coach Karen, anything. Okay. Voila, now we now we have an actual face. So we're gonna now I'm starting to draw the eyes. So I'm looking at myself. Self-portraits, remember? Beautiful self-portraits. I'm gonna look at myself, look at my eyes. Um, when we're drawing your eyes, actually, if you start here on the edge of the circle, so you can you guys see that mark? Start here also. It can be split into three even sections. One, two, three. And that kind of gives you the guideline of where your eyes are going to fall. One's going to be right here, and one's going to be right here. So drawing my eye, they're kind of like ovals, but they're a little, they start small. They start small over, and then they come up, rise up, and then they kind of fall down. I, I don't really personally like to draw a bottom line. I leave it open. So then I'm gonna go in with, figure out which way are you looking? Are you looking up? Are you looking down? Are you looking to the side? I'm gonna have my eyes looking this way. So I'm gonna bring my um, iris closer to this corner. It's kind of like another circle. We're drawing another circle. And then I usually leave one portion of like a smaller circle inside of it white. Give some reflection. Eyes are looking huge today, but that's okay. And then if you want, you can go with some eyelashes. And I usually do check marks. So when I'm going, when I start on this line, I go like this. Making check marks. So those are gonna be my eyelashes. <laughs> then we're gonna do the same thing on our side. So starting small. Starting with a slant, and then we're gonna bring it up. And then if I'm looking this way, I'm gonna bring this eye actually all the way over here. Leaving that part in the middle, kind of blank. Cool, now I have two eyes in here. I think we need to add some eyelashes. Okay, great. Now uh, let's go in with the nose. So you see where this circle ends? I'm gonna go down a little bit further to like right here. You can draw that line across if that helps. When I'm drawing my nose, I usually just do like a half circle. I started with a half circle 
and then I go in with the nostrils that are like a, a another circle on the end or like a, a P shape on the end. And when you're drawing your nose, um, another tip is that your where your nose ends is towards the the um, the duct tear duct. So right in the right where your eye ends is kind of where your nose goes. Cool. Now we have eyes and we have a nose. Um, now we're gonna drop down to the mouth. So you're just gonna drop down a little bit more for the mouth. I'm gonna start it with the V. Make sure you're looking at your face. Self, self, selfies, self portraits. <laughs> and then we're gonna go on with the lips. The, the lips typically end in the middle of the eye. So I'm gonna just draw a little thing right there just so I kind of know where how far to go. And then look how the shape of your lips. Mine kind of go up and curve over. And then when I'm here, I'm not, if you do this line straight across, it kind of looks fake. So I like to just do like a, a loose M. And then for the bottom, I'm just gonna detach it and do it like that. I'm making kind of just a little curve. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I'm gonna go in here, maybe add more curves to the nose. Cool. Oh, now we're missing eyebrows. Definitely need those bad boys. <laughs> For eyebrows, you can just take it up from where the eye is, go up here, and then you're making, what's this, like a slant, and then a curve down. And then you just fill it in. You can kind of do check marks because sometimes our eyebrows go go different um, thicknesses. And then same thing for the other side. Slant and then down. Mine kind of gets um, smaller as they get towards the end of my eye. Yay! Looking good, guys. Let us know if we're moving too fast. How's it going? Can't wait to see all of your work. All right, so we have eyebrows. Now we're just missing our ears. Cool thing about the ears, they're going to start on the eye line. I kind of have round eye ears. So I'm going to go up, make another slant line. I'm going to curve it. And then your ears end where the bottom of your nose are most of the time. So what we're doing today, all of this is just like a guideline, but you know, everybody's body is different. So you'll have to look at yourself and see um, what your ears, maybe your ears are more are pointier, or maybe they're um, not as wide and they're closer to your face. Or maybe they're attached, maybe they're detached. Awesome, she's looking good. So now, now I normally go in, once I have like a good feel of my face, I'm just gonna add or just outline the face some more. Maybe make my chin a little curvier. Uh, maybe go in here, here. And then, cause Brittany, um, I'm putting in my hair. <laughs> Not bald, I'm close to it, but we're gonna, we wanna add some hair. For the hairline, just kind of like a half circle at the top is where your hairline normally is. And my hair today, let's see, I'm gonna do like a curvy line here and then it kinda comes like this. And then it goes like here. And I kinda have like a little, shape like this going. Gorgeous. And then earrings. <laughs> what are we struggling with, Ashley? What are we, what's, what's, where are we struggling? Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add earrings, if you're wearing earrings or if you're wearing headphones, I'm wearing earrings. Make a half circle like that. That's how my earrings look. 
Boom. That's because Brittany. <laughs> Don't forget, what did I say? We're going to autograph everything. We're going to put a date on everything because you never know. Um, someone might find your work later and want to know. Um, want to know what? Want to know who made it? Okay. So we're getting, we're moving through the lesson. We are um, just going to touch on colors and then um, we're going to wrap it up for the day. So we have our self portraits. We're going to come back and color those. Um, but we want to touch on quickly the color wheel. So the color wheel, there we go. The color wheel um, and maps out the colors in the rainbow. And depending on how you combine them, um, it's gonna help your, your drawing pop. So how we saw before with the Van Gogh piece, how you use blue and orange, um, or even um, and the Frida piece, how there's a reason why they choose certain colors. Certain colors give you certain feelings. Um, so for today, if you just have um, one color, one crayon you're going to do something that's more monochromatic um so can't, yeah karen just dropped the the color wheel in there um, in case you need that at home to reference but if you're using just one color you're going to do um you're going to color your portrait in a monochromatic format which means which means that um, mono meaning one and chromatic is, is color. So for your drawing, um, you're gonna use, if so say purple was just my, my color, I'm gonna go in with purple. So you can go purple, you can just do different shades. So some parts I'll go dark, some parts I'll go kind of medium, and some parts are go light. And then just changing how, how hard I color is gonna help it come to life. So you're just gonna use one color. Um, if you have a whole a range of crayons at home, I wanna challenge you to do um, uh, either a complimentary or a tetriadic, um, tetrad, sorry, color palette. No, try a three. <laughs> I'm still deciding. Um, we complimentary is going to be something that's across each other. So say like today, this one kind of falls. Let's say this one's blue violet. So then I would pull out a yellow orange color to use with it. Do you guys see that? It makes a really cool combination. So, um, or if you have red, if you have a red crayon, look to see if you have a green crayon. And you want to color your portrait with those two colors. And when you're coloring, if you have more than one color, you're going to um, make sure that the colors, try to use colors in different places. So if I have a section that's orange, I'm going to put blue next to it. If you have more than those two colors, you can try to do something that's three color. That would be really fun to see. So say you have a blue crayon, you're going to use red and yellow. If I have a violet crayon, I'm going to use a blue, green, and a yellow orange. So use the color wheel, figure out what colors you're going to um, use to color. I'm going to start coloring, but I want you guys to drop questions in the chat. If you guys have any, this is I started this project already, right? <laughs> and I um, went in first with the complementary color scheme. So I started with orange and blue. You see how I put, when it was blue, I put orange next to it. Um, and then I just went in with purple because I love purple. But where it, it makes a very, it makes a, the piece pop. So these are some of the pieces that I did earlier. I'm gonna start coloring with you guys. Um, and then when you're done, cut them out because I think it looks neat to have a cool little border, a cool little face like this. And then you guys can hang it up somewhere. So I'm gonna get started on the coloring. Um, we'll color a little bit. I'm using today gouache, but you guys are more than welcome to use anything. Um, just so you can see what this looks like. I, I just discovered these, they're, they're very new to me, um, but they're, they're super vibrant and fun to play with. And it's kind of like watercolor, but even more vibrant. So I'm just laying this out. I'm going to start with the monochromatic. So I kind of already have it going on here. You see, I'm just coloring. I think my hair is going to be 
lighter. So we'll do coloring for, for a little bit, maybe like two more minutes. Um, but if you guys have questions, let us know. On Friday, we're gonna do a Q and A with our, um, some of our head coaches for our programming. And they're gonna touch on basically what they've been doing with their time at home. So if you guys have any questions or you're, or you're kind of struggling or what do I do with the, with the kids at home or how do I spend my time? Um, that's gonna be a great time to ask them that. We actually had a coach who changed her figure skates into um, some rollerblades. So if you're curious about that, let us know. Um, but besides that, really excited to have you guys on. And please, 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 I wanna see every single piece that, that um, was created today. No excuses. <laughs> I wanna see everything that you guys made. Um, so if you need to spend more time coloring before you're ready to share with the world, that's, that's fine too. Uh, <laughs> but besides that, we're gonna, we're gonna get ready to sign off. If you guys have any questions, post them in the group, in the little chat thing. Thanks so much for joining on. I think we had at most like 15. That's really awesome. This is my monochromatic self-portrait. Do you have a model? Is that the question? <laughs> Do I have a model? I mean, I, I am my model <laughs> since they're self-portraits. Um, but I may have my brother or sister, uh, or <laughs> my sister's not here, but I may have my mom or somebody pose as my model for the day so I can do more of these. What else? What other questions do you guys have? One thing about drawing and just like everything, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So if it's something that you wanna do, um, you just have to practice and try different things. The best thing about using this color palette, the mono uh, using um, a color scheme that limits you is that it, it's really great for your creativity. So I'm gonna go in and try to color this one now or paint this one. How's it coming? So this is what I'm using now. You guys see how vibrant these, these colors are? Can you see that? Nice blonde contour. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> eggs, mold eggs. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, gonna wet this a little bit. I'm using blue and orange. Anybody wanna tell me what color scheme that is if I'm using blue and orange? I'm going to go in with that. Look at that color. Super nice. I'm going to go in here with the blue. So you can even play around with maybe I want a dark blue section and then maybe I want like a light blue. I'm going to paint this whole thing blue like this, and then I'm going to go in and paint the orange on the cheeks. Okay. Now I'm going with the orange. Or you could just color it whatever you want to. <laughs> That's always an option. <laughs> I think it's why I like um, art so much because at the end of the day, it's really whatever you want to make of it is what, what matters as long as you're having fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna sign off, but feel free to reach out to us, comment. This will be posted later on in case you have some friends that need some drawing help. <laughs> or if you wanna do this with the family later on. Um, love to, I would love to see it and I can't wait to see what you guys made. 
All right. See you guys.